have a question before you get into your excellent interview, which I have seen snippets of already. When does a, a movement, 2009, comedian, uh, which was anti-establishment, become establishment and we have to drop that moniker? And the answer I would suggest is A, when they're in government and B, when they sign up with the PD, which was exactly the party which Griot was vehemently against when he started his movement as well. So we have to drop the anti-establishment thing and say they've just done what Saritza and other people yep. do. They've just come into line, haven't yep, they? Yep, and I think that's a big issue that the Five Star Movement are actually contending with internally. Mm. There are a lot of unhappy members within the party Party. And actually, this is one of the st obstacles that we highlighted last week, because they do have to put this potential government to their open democratic platform. Right. There's an open system called Rousseau there, which is essentially an online platform where every single member of Five Star gets their say in whether or not they think this government should go ahead. So it's quite interesting speaking to some people on the ground and that they, what they may do, given it, it's a referendum at the end of the day, is uh, phrase the question a little bit differently. So instead of phrasing the question, would you like to enter into a government with PD, which would obviously probably be a no, they might phrase it as, would you like to give Prime Minister Conte uh, the ability to push forward our agenda? in government sure. so the phrasing of that question is going to be very important but that being said you know all of that aside let's just recap some of the uh, the activity that we had last week we found out now formally prime minister conte now has the mandate to put this government together between pd and five stars so all going to plan but friday consultation started between the various parties and mr conte after which at about 4 p.m on friday afternoon mr di maio who's still the leader of the five star movement gave a speech essentially giving an ultimatum to PD, saying, look, either you agree with our points and you incorporate all of our points into your platform, or we go to the vote. So I had the chance to catch up with him right after he gave that speech. And I said to him, look, can you just explain to us what is going on here? Let's take a listen. I believe that we can go to the elections at any time in Italy. The truth is that those who now have pulled down the government and are asking for elections because they are looking to escape from the electoral promises that they had made. These are people and parties who had promised, like the Lega, a flat tax of 30 to 40 billion. And when they discovered that they did not have the money, they pulled the plug on the government in order to postpone this. Voting is always a great expression of democracy, but it can be a means to run away from the commitments made to citizens. We don't run away from the commitments we have made to our citizens. I want to give a government to this country, but not at all costs. If another Conte government is formed, it will be formed because we have in the government program the issues that interest people, and we must not at all approximate these issues. These objectives must be very clear. So that was the leader of the Five Star Movement, Mr. Di Maio, saying he wants to form a government, but not at all costs. And I think what we need to remember is that despite the polling today, Five Star are still the number one party when it comes to the parliamentary composition. They still have the most seats in the Senate. They still have the most seats in the Chamber of Deputies as well. So when it comes to calling the shots today in terms of the numbers, they still have the flex and they know that. And they know that PD will need them to get into government and PD are obviously coming in on the back foot here, that's the established party. But there's another, as ever, there's another complication to the story, which is have they completely ruled out the possibility in the future of tying up with Lega? Because when I was speaking to Mr. Di Maio, he referred to the fact that the government had put in, put in place reforms and the, those reforms seemed to be working. So I asked him, have you completely ruled out a possibility in the future of tying up with Lega if there were another round of snap elections? Let's take a listen. I believe that, as we have always said, the concepts of right and left are outdated in the world and in Italy too. We have been in government for 14 months with Lega, during which we implemented unparalleled measures on employment and welfare. Salvini decided to pull the plug on that government because he looked at the polls and wanted to take everything for himself. But those who want everything, lose everything. I think that Lega has had its opportunity to govern with us and to govern this country, and it decided to waste an historical opportunity. So, as far as I am concerned, I am now looking forwards and at what government could be formed in which, if issues and programs are respected, we could do good things for Italy. Steve, I just want to recap something he said there that I think is very important and we will probably remember at some point in the future. He says, the concepts of right and left are outdated in the world. So they're not branding themselves as a party of the left or a party of the right. This is a party that started off as a populist party, anti-establishment party from the far left. And today, fast forward, they've been in government for 50 months and he's saying, 
these notions of right and left are completely outdated. So for me, the way I see that is they're keeping the door a little bit open, potentially, mm. to the possibility of a tie-up oh, with the party from the right. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.